Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, today we're going to unwrap the mysteries of how a manual transmission actually works. Yeah, I, and here's the thing. <laughs> I love no. when you start out with. No, 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 yeah. no. Those, those are going. I really like. I really like the research in this one, but I, I think the reality is. So I thought they were simple. Like I oh, was no. under the impression that you just push that thing really hard. It makes some crunchy noises, and it does eventually do that. you're in a different gear. Um, the reality is. They are super sophisticated, especially like current generation, like manual transmissions. Automatic is a whole different level. We'll, we'll probably do an episode, I imagine, following I this not. up on just automatic transmissions. But they are exceptionally complex pieces of equipment, like exceptional. They are super, super complicated, which is probably why it's so expensive to get a new one or to have one rebuilt or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah. Um, so the purpose of a transmission, for those of you... Do those of you who don't know in like a car or truck or whatever it might be is to transfer the power that the engine is creating to the wheels. And it does that because it's connected to a drive shaft. Uh, and there's a bunch of different gears in the transmission of different shapes and sizes, not really shapes, mostly round, uh, but sizes, meaning the different number of teeth on them. Um, and these different number of teeth and the way that the gears then line up is how they change the amount of power that's being created. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more with the actual equations, which is something we rarely talk about on the Ooh. show. But uh, that's just the basics of how this stuff works. So, so interesting. So before uh, 1893, so a little bit of quick history on, oh, yeah. on manual transmission. So a Are we French, going to France here? Yeah. So yeah. so French inventor uh, Louis René Panard and Emile Levisol uh, are credited with development of the first modern manual transmission. They they developed a three speed transmission in 1894, and as the basic design is still the kind of standard starting point for most. Uh, modern day manual transmissions. Um, yes, sir. The cat that started Renault. I didn't. I didn't write this one down, but whatever the guy's name is, that Renault, the motor company, the the French motor company. Originally, these uh, manual transmissions were using chains to to yes. do some of the work. And uh, what Renault did was he switched this over to using gears rather than chains to do some of the changing from one speed to another speed. 1898, Luis Renault That's changed it that design. It, it is. Fun fact for you, Luke. Shoot. Totally unrelated. Uh, back, you said Emile Lavasseur was one of those first people to do this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I, I thought it was Emil. I don't know. But we had some, maybe you just pronounce it differently. Emil, I played with in tennis when I was in high school and we were playing doubles and he served the ball and sent it straight into the center of my back. So thanks a lot, Emil. That was, that was really nice of you. Um, wow. Yeah. Not no hard feelings the grudge there. Right? No, no. So uh, the big, big change came in 1928 when Cadillac introduced the synchronized manual transmission, which really reduced uh, gear grinding that, that sweet noise that you hear when you shift Luke uh, and made shifting smoother and easier. Have you ever driven a, uh, so, so first of all, quick question. This is for you and for our listeners. So for write in, you know, right make in. a comment. Yeah. Do you know how to drive a manual transmission well? Oh, see, you had to throw in that last like, word. Like, like you can start on a hill, like a really steep hill. Uh, you can not miss a gear. You cannot grind them. You cannot burn up the clutch and get that stinky clutch smell. So you know what really grinds my gears? No. Um, <laughs> No, I cannot drive one well. When I was 17 or 18, I learned and I could drive one well. And then when I was 19, I no longer ever drove one. And so it's been, what, almost 20 years? Yeah. So you do not want to trust me if you don't have an automatic. I gotcha. I gotcha. How about yourself? Uh, so my first vehicle was a manual transmission. And uh, I, I haven't driven. It was driven. back in like 1928, oh, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I have to imagine I still could. I feel like it's one of those things. It's like riding a bike. You kind of, I mean, all cars are slightly different. Like, so I, I had a Jeep Wrangler that was uh, a five speed okay. and the clutch was 
really, really high. Like you, you'd have to push it all the way to the floor and it really wouldn't catch yeah. until you were almost off of the clutch. And then I had a little Subaru Impreza and it was the exact opposite. Like I had to put my foot to the floor. So I think all cars are slightly different, but once you find that, that, that sweet spot for the clutch. Um, Maybe old crappy cars are a little different. I bet yeah. if you had like a new one today, it would probably be pretty smooth. Yeah. So, so the, the synchronous piece is the interesting thing. So there are still vehicles nowadays, James, that do not use synchronous systems for their gear yeah. shifting. And most of them are uh, really large uh, commercial vehicles. I was going to so, say big old trucks. So big old trucks. And that's when, when you hear that term double clutching, what double clutching is, and it, it, it's like an art form, is so your output shaft of your engine, like, like you said, it, it spins at a certain RPM and it's either low or high. There's you, you, you can't change whatever that maximum RPM is. And if you think about it, if you didn't have a transmission, your car would just like max out at, you know, whatever first gear is. It would be, right. you know, Slow. you'd go 15 miles an hour and that's it. So what, what these big old, what, what, what older manual transmission did and big heavy equipment vehicles do now is the driver actually has to get the timing of the output shaft of the motor in time with the input shaft of the transmission to connect the two. And that's where that double clutching comes in and it's not synchronous. What a synchronous does, and this is like amazing to me that like, like, I just think about like when this stuff was invented, they thought of this. So in a synchronous transmission, and we'll get to clutches in a minute, but I want to talk about synchronous transmission. So in a synchronous transmission, all those gears that you have are all spinning on the input shaft that goes down to your drive shaft. So they're all spinning. They're, or they're, output. they're uh, or, or output of the motor, input of the transmission. I, 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 let me, I have a little diagram. So that would be the input shaft. So okay. they're, they're all spinning on that input shaft. Um, and what happens is when you want, a, and it's loosely spinning, and what happens with a synchronous is uh, there are a number of rings that slowly engage when your engine's going, let's say 5,000 RPM. So that input shaft's going 5,000 RPMs. And if you would just jam into third gear without not good. synchronizing it, that's where the grr, grr, clunk, clunk, push, push happens. Yes. What these, what these, because that gear is spinning, what happens is it slows down just temporarily enough where these little rings sync up and then the main gear for, let's say third gear engages with the shaft itself. And then that drives over to your drive shaft and to your differential. And then it hits your wheels in the back. So, uh, so usually there, there's a couple of these things that move back and forth inside of your manual transmission. And some cars, I think it's like fourth or fifth gear is directly connected to your output shaft. So there is no gear between the two of them. So when you get to that gear, it's just it's the shaft and the shaft. And that's why you have really high speed, but you don't have a lot of torque in your higher gears. Right. And we're kind of talking about the difference between, uh, I can't remember what they call the first one, that sliding one, but then there's also that constant mesh transmission yeah. where those gears are just like naturally meshed up. And then mm -hmm. they have the couplers that then slide into place so that they're not loosely connected anymore. They yeah. then tie everything together. Uh, I did want to step back into history land, just a smidge, a smidge more. Oh, you can step back as much as you, you like. James. I know you love your history. No, I, I love do. my history. Um, manual transmissions were really the standard for all vehicles through like the first half of the 20th century. And then the automatic started to show up, which actually came about in like 1904. Uh, General Motors introduced the clutchless automatic under the name Hydromatic in mm -hmm. 1938. But the first like truly like fully automatic transmission wasn't until 1948. When these are super luxury cars, right? Buick Dynaflow, yeah, transmission. Uh, but we're not here to talk about automatics, so let's not do that anymore. But gotcha. two fun facts for you. Shoot. The United States and Japan love automatics. Like basically all of our vehicles are automatics at this point. You have to be like that guy to have a stick mm -hmm. anymore. I have a friend who's that guy. He may or may not listen to this. He never lets me drive his car because I would destroy it. Um, Eastern Europe 
uh, Western Europe in particular actually still has a ton of manual transmission vehicles. That's still their go-to. Eastern Europe and a lot of Asia are also still big on manuals. So globally, manual transmissions make up, I think currently, I think it's like 37% globally. And yeah. when you come to the United States, it's literally- it's like over 90 for it, it, it's, automatics. Yeah, for yeah. automatics. It's, it's crazy um, how few vehicles- um, you can actually get in the United States that actually have uh, a manual transmission. So yeah. So before we get into any more about how these things work, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. General Motors, Subaru, Buick, you name it. We had a problem this week, Luke, that so many of the car manufacturers reached out to us. Mm, we couldn't that, decide. Yeah, we couldn't decide. So we decided to just forego any sort of sponsorship this episode and just instead focus on the shout outs for our amazing community. Who do we got? Killian S. Uh, K- Killian? K-I-L-I-A-N. Okay. Did I say that right? No, I, I'm guessing you Isn't did. Isn't that like a beer? Isn't Killian's a, a yeah. beer? Mm. Basically, he's an expert on 3D printing houses. And we did an episode on 3D printed houses. And we got it all wrong. Um, he said we did a good job. But okay. he would like to come on and do an episode with us to discuss, you know, what we got potentially less than 100% accurate and just some other things and common misconceptions that people have about 3D printing in general. Okay. So super cool there. And then Elliot P wrote in, uh, <laughs> this one was kind of funny. Recently got into your podcast. I'm a big fan. Who knew shipping containers could be so interesting? Who Which knew? is funny because I thought that as well. He says, I'm from the UK, so I don't understand the jokes about Pennsylvania, but I still <laughs> love it. So <laughs> uh, thank you, Elliot. I'll have to, I'll have to ask Paul about some some fun like English UK jokes. Facts. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So any of you who want to write in and tell us we got something wrong, want to tell us we're funny even though you don't understand our jokes, want to just, you know, say my voice. Share some odious. local humor from where you're from. All of those things. Or if you just want some amazing unprofessional engineering stickers, why don't you email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share, give us some reviews. And as always, you can tell your smart device to play the Unprofessional Engineering Podcast. I feel like we haven't gotten enough subscriptions or reviews lately, Luke. Community, you're it's slacking. Been slow. It's been you're slow. Slacking. I can't really back that up, but... You know, I want more. Okay, so back to how transmissions work, manual ones. Um, let me get back into equations real quick, Oops. and then I'll let you say how things actually work. Um, so we talked about the basics at the start of the episode, and then Luke got us into how these things are sliding around and connecting and transferring power, all that stuff. Uh, here's a little equation about how it all works, and that's power equals torque times speed. Um, to climb a hill, you need more torque, right? Because lower gear. That, that's right. So you need a lower gear. So therefore, the equation becomes torque equals power divided by speed. By reducing the speed at the transmission, you can get a higher torque with the same amount of power. So this is kind of like the magic of the transmission, mm-hmm. right? If you don't need so much torque, so if you're going downhill, if you're going on a flat road, basically not going uphill, uh, you can increase the transmission speed. So super simple. So how do they work? If you think back to your like design of machinery or machine design courses in college, that's ME50 and ME51 for you Penn Ooh, Staters out there, there. at least it was when I was there. It's all about those uh, the gears, right? So N1 over N2 equals T2 over T1, where N is your speed and T is the number of teeth on the gear. So all of the changing up of the number of teeth means speed changes. And this is then how you change the amount of torque that's being created. Um, I'm going to stop there because the rest of it's about the gears and the number of gears on the shafts that we're talking about. So like three speed, four speed, five speed, things like that. So I I have some practical ways that you could like demonstrate this. Uh, I need to hear this. So let's say you're, you know, and I'm not going to pick on millennials, but you know, I, I think Saturday Night Live or someone did a skit where people were carjacking and they jumped into cars and it was a manual transmission and they didn't know what to do. Because um, just very few kids, not kids, very few people nowadays who are becoming new drivers uh, know how to drive a manual transmission. So a practical way. Oh, I love manual transmissions. You, see, uh, you're that guy. Ugh. A practical way to do this is. Uh, so if, if you're on a hill 
or even a flat part, put it in fifth gear and try to take off. The car is going to stall. Put it in fourth gear and you'll start to maybe go and not I was going to say, you think so? Uh, third, you can definitely start in third gear on flat. Uh, it takes a long time to catch up. And what it is, is that gear is has a lot of speed and it's all about capability that fourth gear and fifth gear have lots of speed capability but they do not have torque capability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the exact opposite if you're going 55 miles an hour and you're in fifth gear put it in first gear and see what happens all this i mean don't do that kids um, <laughs> This is all terrible advice. This, this is all terrible <laughs> advice because you're basically going to kill your parents' car. You end up burning up the clutch, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Um, but so, so they all essentially work the same way. So these, so in a sliding transmission system, which is the old school, these gears slide back and forth and engage from the drive shaft to the output of the motor and they slide the synchro we i described the synchronous they're they're always in connection it's just whether they're mechanically connected to the shaft so only one position can be at one time and that's whatever gear uh you happen to be in the only caveat to this is reverse and i i never knew how reverse worked in the manual I, I transmission looked that up specifically for this which is it, very interesting so in in with reverse so reverse is not synchronous it's one of the few gears that is not so most modern day cars are a synchronous transmission where they're always engaged reverse is not always engaged because it just wouldn't work that way you, the car wouldn't move um but there's actually three gears in, not one not two but three but three thrice there's thrice gears i've been wanting to use the word thrice for a while i don't while. think that's how you use that i don't word. think it is either <laughs> uh, but uh so reverse has three so if you imagine you have your uh your output shaft hitting your drive shaft and the drive shaft is spinning and if you just connected it to the gear it would go the same direction as all the other gears. But what it does is it throws a second gear in between the two of them, which reverses the output gear. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it also has very many, it's, it's usually higher torque. So it's very similar to a first gear uh, or a second gear. Uh, it's not meant for necessary. It's not meant for high speeds. <laughs> if you've ever tried <laughs> to do- Racing backwards. Yeah, if, have, have you ever tried to do the cop car spin around thing? No. So I did in high school one time. My sister you had the this, worst. My sister had this Ford Escort pony, and I could never get it fast enough in reverse to cut the wheel and swing it and do all that sort of stuff. It just seems like a terrible um, idea. It, was, it wasn't my car, so yeah. Good point. Uh, so reverse is the, the only caveat where there's actually three gears instead of two uh, involved. There you go. Uh, fun fact, or maybe warning for all of you out there, since Luke has just been giving you such Terrible. great advice through Terrible. all of this. <laughs> Anybody needs any driving uh, lessons, just give me a call. Right. Since the idle gear for reverse doesn't have a synchronizer that Luke kind of described there earlier, you have to come to a complete stop before you shift into reverse. And if you try to, <laughs> and you're not, it, you, you get that crunk, crunk, crunk. You get crunk. a lot of cool noises. A lot of cool noises. Nothing else bad happens. So, so a... I, I have a question for you real Shoot. quick, because I'm not a car guy. All of this stuff's just like theory to me. I don't really care otherwise. You said earlier that uh, fifth gear is where everything's meshed up. I saw that fourth gear was probably where it was meshed up. But does it change if there's different, like if it's like a five speed or a six speed or something? And is I, six speed even a thing? It, so it is. So I it, thought it, so. So at some point, the gears start to go the other direction. So, so an engine has a maximum RPM. So if you're looking at your, your gauges, you know, you have a max RPM and usually like you don't want to be above like 6,000. Like if you're going okay. super fast, you're, you're, you're maybe shifting right at 5,500, 6,000 RPM. So that's re uh, revolutions per minute. And engines just max was out. that specifically for me you're like i know he doesn't know what i'm talking about um <laughs> and what happens with the really high gear so every gear that you're doing it, it, it's taking that six thousand rpms which could you imagine if your rear tires were spinning at six thousand oh rpms gosh. in first gear just... so what it yeah it would be terrible so what happens is it that's why the gears are uh in at least in first gear uh they are a much 
larger gear. So you get that torque and that speed. What happens with really high gears is they potentially get bigger. So you can actually have the RPMs of the wheel go faster than the RPM of the output shaft of the motor. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. So at some point they're equal. And, and, that's, and, and it depends on the car, depends on the engine, but from what I understand, it's right around fourth or fifth gear where it's a direct connection. They're spinning at the exact same speed. But then when you shift into sixth gear, you can actually go more than the maximum RPMs of the vehicle just because of the way you do the gear ratios. Okay, Makes very sense. cool. Yeah, I remember thinking I was like, I had made it when I could like slip start into second and not like even worry about first. But anyways, before we go on, Luke, let's take a break for this week's Luke's rant. Okay. So my rant is specifically automatic versus manual transmissions. Oh, and, and this is, this is a parenting thing, James. So as, as a lot of our listeners know, uh, I'm a father of a young daughter. She's, she's 14. Um, going on 27. I was going to say, not all this, so young all anymore. All this gray huh? hair you see is because of that. Uh, but I am a firm believer that every child in the world that learns how to drive should have to learn how to drive on a manual transmission. I just, I, I just think- Why? That... It's so hard to text then. <laughs> no? <laughs> you were so... Oh my goodness. I don't know. If I could come through the screen and punch you right in the nose, I would. <laughs> That's like my nightmare as a father is my daughter texting. I so I, 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 so number one, I think when you have, so I, I think that the instances of car crashes, and I don't have any statistics to back this up. This, this is, is this Luke's is, gut feeling. This is in my gut. I guarantee you there's more teenage accidents occurring because of all of these driver enhancements, automatic transmissions, backup cameras, lane departure, the little beeps whenever a car comes up beside you, blind spot monitoring, all these safety features, I think what happens forces you not to pay attention when you drive. When you're driving a manual transmission, I have to know exactly where I'm going. I have to pay attention to my gear. I can't over rev. I can't under rev. I don't want to stall. And I think when you drive a manual transmission, you're driving the car. I think modern day vehicles, you're riding in a car. And I think that's the problem. And you can do lots of other things because you're expecting the car to keep you safe. I love that you get to make these blanket statements that I think no to deal data. with on the with emails. No data. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, I can't wait to hear from everyone. Uh, yeah. So, so I, so my daughter, I will be buying her. So probably next year sometime she will be getting a manual transmission. Next year? She'll only uh, be 15. Well, we're going to get it early and we're going to do some work on it together. Father, daughter oh, kind of things. And I think okay. she, I think she'll appreciate the vehicle a little bit more if she does some I work so. on it. It's not just handed to her. So she's going to be getting a Jeep Wrangler four wheel drive, five speed, and I'm going to take the back seat out of the vehicle because so this can't be in there because she can only have one person in the vehicle at one time. There is actually statistics is. that state that teenagers with more kids in a car have yeah. more accidents. So she'll have one passenger in that. Seat. I feel like you're going to then give her a Tacoma and take that after you put all of this ah, work into it. I have a feeling <laughs> that she might be driving the truck and I'll be driving the Jeep. Uh, that's funny. Luke, would you go so far as to say you're a bad parent if you don't teach your child to drive a manual? Not bad. I would say a parent who doesn't love their children. Okay. I think that's a <laughs> fair statement. Okay. Moving on. Luke. Moving on. What do you want to cover next? Uh, so I think we have to talk about what a clutch does, right? I think so too. Yeah. Because so, <sighs> so all this magic is happening down in the transmission, right? Yeah. Um, magic and aliens. Like, so, so first of all, if you just think about like the, the engineering that goes into the synchronous uh, transmissions and the machining and the calibration and all that stuff. So that's all amazing. But now you got to connect that to the motor, you know, and you know, how do you do that? Like, like, so is, is the motor still running when I'm shifting and what happens when I'm not in gear and when I press the clutch? So here's, here's how clutch works. So in between your motor and your transmission, you have uh, a flywheel. That flywheel has a clutch plate in between it and then on the other so it's a sandwich and then on the other side is a pressure plate and when you are driving a manual transmission and let's say you're going you know whatever you're going 25 miles an hour your foot's on the gas and you press the clutch all of a sudden you're just going to rev the engine up 
and you'll, you'll, and then if you let the, and if you let the clutch out, it'll kind of catch and it'll like thrust you forward. Uh, so what the clutch does is that pressure plate actually gets disengaged and that clutch plate is this really abrasive material on two different sides. And the friction of that being pressed up against the flywheel with the pressure plate is what engages and disengages. So it's, it's a super aggressive kind of thing, but they have all these dampener springs inside of uh, that, that, that whole flywheel assembly or clutch uh, plate assembly so that it kind of takes that, that torque and vibration that happens between the motor drive shaft output and the transmission. And essentially, whenever you're pressing the clutch, all you're doing is temporarily disconnecting that, that engine that's spinning at whatever speed you're telling it to spin based off of how much you're pushing the gas. And that's why if you over rev, the cars jump. If you under rev, the cars stall. Um, this is also where people tend to burn up the clutch. You hear that burning up the clutch. And that's when you have the clutch temporarily uh, pressed and you're just burning that abrasive material in between the flywheel and the pressure plate. And that's that smell that you, you get whenever people say they're riding the clutch. Um, so don't ride the clutch. Good advice. I have, I have a lot of valuable stuff to add here. Shoot. One, there's an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> where he gets an abrasive side and he's very mean to people and he offends his grandmother, which don't be abrasive, kids. Um, second, you said it's like a sandwich. What is your favorite kind of sandwich? Uh, 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 fast food is Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Can't beat it. I just like a good pastrami sandwich. Mm. I love pastrami. Well, okay. I, okay. I didn't realize we were going like that far, well, yeah, but okay. Yeah. Chick-fil-A is good too. Um, okay. Moving on, Luke, what do you have next? Moving on. So I want to talk about kind of the parts of a transmission. So we talked about kind of how they work, the bits. So, and this is going to go from the person to the engine, right? So the very first thing you have is your hand. I was going to say your hand and your foot. Like. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, your hand and your foot are involved. So you have your hand and your foot. These are your two input. So basically, you're kind of handling the front end and the back end of this all at one time. So uh, the first thing you have is your gear shifter. And that gear shifter has uh, shifting rods connected to it. And these shifting rods are what move the shifting fork back and forth. And this in modern day cars, uh, it moves those... Um, those synchronizers in between third and fourth gear and in between first and second gear. So, uh, so that's what the shifting rod moves. Uh, your idle gear, uh, this is whenever you're not in gear, you're, you're, you're totally disconnected. So the engine can spin as much as it likes and the actual drive shaft does not spin uh, at all. Um, you have your reverse gear, uh, you have your, your counter shaft, and then you finally have uh, the output shaft, which connects to your drive shaft, which then connects to the back of your car. If it's a two wheel drive vehicle or rear wheel drive vehicle, and you have a differential in the back and we should do something on differentials too. That's a pretty interesting thing. Um, <laughs> And then the foot does the front end of it. So the foot runs the clutch, mm -hmm. which disengages uh, the flywheel and the pressure plate with the clutch plate in between. So it's this it's this kind of marriage or dance, as I'll say, Ooh, James, dance. of like shifting appropriately because you can't shift. You can, but it's not good. You can't shift without that pressing the clutch. Advice um and can you, you though like can you even jam it in there so they call it power shifting and you just like jam you can do it it's not good for yeah. you know let's and, not do that yeah, either yeah don't do that either kids so it's this kind of dance of the two and uh probably the easiest thing to do if you're learning how to drive a manual transmission and you're on a level road don't even touch the gas put it in first gear and just let the clutch out slowly eventually the pressure plate and everything catches and the torque won't stall you out and you'll just be in first gear it'll just kind of pull itself on a hill it's called clutch braking you can actually play with that clutch a little bit and feather it so you don't have to jam the gas and do the stalling thing it's a difficult thing to do but you can do it mm -hmm. so um do you still drive with two feet uh no not now, okay. not not now that i drive okay. an automatic i know a bunch of people that what are used to manuals that still use two feet um 
for their automatics as well, which is not a great idea, I don't think. Um, a couple pros and cons, Luke. Shoot. Pros to having a manual transmission. The cost, a new car with a manual transmission is around 800 to a grand less than an automatic. You know, that's slowly changing. It is It is slowly changing. But again, I think it's more like they're just producing so so many less uh, manuals. Uh, maintenance, the manual transmission vehicle is cheaper to maintain and repair. The transmission is easier on the brakes uh, because the automatic transmission works with the car moving forward and drive, and it's always like pushing. So it's easier on brakes, fewer brake replacements, all that. Manual transmission fluid requires fewer changes than an automatic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just get rid of my car before that happens because I got podcast money, so that ain't no thing. But still, um, control. Like if it were you, you know, a skilled manual driver has better control because of the faster shifting response. And this is really a big advantage in the bad weather. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Pennsylvania, maybe we probably have a higher rate of manuals because of something like that. Um, and then fuel savings, manual transmissions. I think it used to be more back in the day. They're but... almost opposite now. It's it, like just the past few years, automatic yeah. transmissions have gotten so efficient. Yeah, I think I think it's less about the transmission itself and more about the features of the vehicle. But yeah. I don't know. Uh, but then there's some cons as well. And when I was going through these, these are weak. These are weak, weak cons. Yeah. Inconvenience. Yeah. The driver not, of the manual transmission has to shift and pay attention. Oh no, uh, tricky driving. This one's kind of fair, I think, because there's some very steep hills, you know, like in PA, especially, you know, we got hills everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's difficult to do there. Stop and go uh, traffic, red lights, things like this. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, and then learning they put in there as another con. And I'm yeah. like, come on, you have to put effort in to learn. No, no. So another another tip, you could always do the e-brake. If you, if you have a hand e-brake, first gear, clutch e-brake on as soon as you start moving then you just lower the e-brake and you take off so i have a couple fun facts too james and we can I wrap have it up two here. fun facts for you as well go ahead i'll let you go last then okay. uh, so my fun fact just 41 of the 327 new car models sold in the united states in 2020 that's only 13 percent actually offer a manual transmission so of all the vehicles you can buy as a brand new vehicle in the united states that has a manual option, there's only 41. Wow. Of 237. Um, 300 and something. Yeah, so uh, out of 327 total <laughs> car models, only 41 are actually That's crazy. available. Uh, so that was in 2020. If you go back just to 2011, 37% came oh, in. Oh, wow. So That's a huge in, drop. In less than a decade, it went from almost 40% down to 13%. Wow. Uh, and then the this is the sad part, James. Um, so supercars are now eliminating manual transmissions. So the Chevy Corvette, the Porsche 911 Turbo, the Jaguar F-Type, the Audi R8, and the Shelby GT500 models mm -hmm. are just a few of the performance vehicles that are no longer available in a manual transmission. That is sad. They have that stupid paddle shifter that make you yeah, feel like I you're have driving that. one, yeah. but it's it's not the same. No, that is sad. A um, couple fun facts for you. Shoot. FDR, Frankie Roosevelt, former friend president, longtime listener, good friend of the show, close personal friend, uh, was a big car guy. But it turns really? out he was also a big polio guy, which doesn't go real well when the only thing you have are like manual transmissions yeah. and you can't work pedals. So DeSoto came up with a special hand controlled uh, system and sent him uh, like a, a convertible to drive that was all rigged up so that How he could cool control everything with his hands. Yeah, super cool. Uh, fun fact number two, totally unrelated, but it, I just kept thinking about it while I was researching this. Can you put planes in reverse? Because you always have those things like the trucks pushing them backwards, right? Yeah. And it says, yes, you can do this, uh, but no one ever does. Some aircrafts are have like power back, but in most cases, airplanes either don't have the capabilities or you're just not allowed to do it because of safety concerns. And it's just easier for them to get pushed back and taxi that way, uh, as opposed to putting it like the thrusters in reverse and pushing it backwards as well. That was Some a totally countries, unrelated fun fact. I think it's interesting <laughs> though. I've always wondered every time I'm on, a, I'm on a plane, it's like, why doesn't this thing just go in reverse as opposed to having this little truck push it? So 
there you go. Anything else you wanted to add? That's before all we wrap I had. Up? We're good. Awesome. Well, Luke, well done today. I was Thank very you. impressed with your knowledge and I can't wait to see your skills as a driver. If any of you would like to tell us how impressed you are with Luke, if you want to tell us that you blew up your mom's car at one Driving point, lessons. if you need driving lessons from Luke, why don't you email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.